Hello and welcome back to Exothermic Plays Games. I'm Exothermic and the date today is Thursday, September 19th, 2024. I've been doing a countdown of my favorite video games of all time through each day of the year, and coming in at number 104 is The Company of Myself. This is one of the most unusual games I'll ever talk about, because not only is it the best Flash game I've ever played, it's one of the most serious games I've ever played in its narrative, art, and how it marries the message to the gameplay. Don't get me wrong, when I say one of the most serious, I don't mean, you know, like, lifelike, or gritty, or adult, or whatever. Uh, there's plenty of things that have gone way further in those regards, but doing it on new grounds is wild. In the company of myself, you play as a man named Jack, who self-narrates as you play through the levels of the game. It's a puzzle platformer with a couple interesting gimmicks that really work with the narrative being told. Jack discusses how he's lonely and has been for a long time since the tragic passing of his wife, Catherine. He just can't bring himself to meet anyone else pretty much in any capacity anymore. So he's gotten very good at being alone and manages to work through that with his own skills. The game displays this via its ghost mechanic. Like any racing game with a ghost racer, for example, you can restart the level and each previous attempt shows up as a shadow doing exactly what the character did. But you can interact with it, they're solid. This means that you can do things like jump on top of them so you can get to higher places. You can even make stairs or ladders with enough of the bodies uh, to reach all sorts of areas you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Some of the best levels are the ones where you need to time specific things as well, like these ones where you pass through a light but shadows don't, or vice versa. Once you start getting really good at all of the solo gameplay, however, the game interjects a new character as Jack talks about meeting and falling in love with Catherine. Now, instead of making shadow clones, you swap back and forth between the two characters, allowing them to open doorways and work together in ways you previously couldn't because you couldn't really be in two places at once, at least not so easily. These levels are a great change of pace, and it's interesting to see the demeanor of the narration change as you do more and more with her, until you get to one level that, if you've gotten decent at visualizing the steps of what you have to do with the two characters, something becomes immediately apparent. This is the most brilliant part of the game, and Eli Pilonen, the designer of The Company of Myself, is a genius for this. The game spends several levels intimately familiarizing the player with different patterns regarding levers and barriers and swapping the two characters. Human pattern recognition is, after all, innately very good, whether people realize they're doing it or not. It's one of our greatest evolutionary traits that allows our species to thrive. The way these levels are paced, the player very quickly figures out that the only way through is for Jack to kill his own wife in order to complete the level. The level is intentionally simple to push the player to have this realization before they necessarily even try doing it. Then there's a few more levels of being alone again, culminating in a really bizarre last level that ties the tone together narratively. Every other level throughout the whole game has had a singular, clearly defined solution. And as far as I can tell in the probably 15 plus times I've beaten this admittedly very short game, uh, there is one solution to this last level. But it's not neat. It's not clearly defined. It's extremely messy. You just throw dozens, maybe even a hundred or more shadow versions of yourself into a pit spamming jump the whole time, and eventually you can cross the chasm by jumping on all of their heads and things just lining up right. It's very odd compared to the rest of the game. And then the narrator changes. The words are no longer coming from Jack, but from a psychiatrist at a mental hospital. It turns out he's detained there in isolation after having murdered Catherine, except he doesn't remember that he did it. 
he tells the psychiatrist the same story, the one that was just narrated to us, the player, throughout the course of the whole game, every single day, as if they've never met before. Jack has ruled a danger to society and will continue his isolation in the facility, maybe for the rest of his life. The sudden shift in tone and content of the game, when the curtain is lifted and reality is revealed, is what put this from good to being the greatest Flash game I've ever played. I forgot to record the line at the end of the credits, but when they do finish, there's one more thing that Jack says. The shrink leaves, and suddenly I don't even have a person to tell my story to anymore. The implication there is that while definitely suffering from some serious trauma, uh, Jack may be a little more cognizant of reality than the doctors had thought, perhaps misunderstanding his struggles the whole time, condemning him to a solitude he neither earned nor deserved. The Company of Myself is one of the simplest examples of video games as a unique art form all its own rather than just being an assemblage of different arts thrown together, and it has really stuck with me for this whole time ever since I first played it, and I love it. Join me tomorrow as I talk about my 103rd favorite game, where I live in constant fear of blue shells.